but I need to thank a few people uh, specifically for their involvement. Please forgive me if I do not mention your name in person. I will begin with our fire authority members, for it is they who have had the foresight and unswerving commitment to realise the benefits of merging two stations in order to protect our operational response and minimise the impact of the public cuts. Equally, my thanks go out to our legal, procurement, finance and ICT teams for their role. Work which is often unseen but has been diligently delivered. Special thanks, and I hope you will understand, go out to our estates team, led by the unflappable Stuart Woods, ably assisted by the tenacious Jean Jones and the conscientious Colin Schofield, but equally assisted by the formidable Gary Bennett, an ex firefighter serving with Merseyside Fire and Rescue Service. These are people who make our fire and rescue service tick. They may not fight fires, some of them, but their contribution to the service is immeasurable. I would also like to thank our crews under the leadership of Station Manager Bill Shepherd, not because they were thrilled with their operational expertise and skills later this afternoon, but because of their attitude they have shown prior to and during the move from their old station in Upton to their new one in Sogo Massey. Nothing has been too much trouble. I hope they will now have the opportunity to enjoy their new surroundings. It also goes without saying that we could not have done this without Waits Construction. Gavin Davis, Construction Director of Waits, will say a few words shortly in relation to the build and our commitment to build this station as sensitively as possible and meet those local aspirations. Waits have shared our vision. They have been exceptional throughout. Thank you, Gavin. The station is incredible, and we look forward to working again together on our build in St. Helens. In closing, I would like to take you, I would like to give you all the opportunity to walk around the station. The boards on display in this room give you some insights into the build process from start to finish. Take time to review the time lapse photography of the build. Rest assured, it doesn't extend to the consultation process. As even with time lapse photography, it may have extended way beyond this session today. Our heritage is also captured, as our heritage centre have quite kindly loaned us some of their interesting memorabilia, which reminds us of just how far the fire rescue service has come in terms of its response, its equipment, and its safety. The artifacts that extend to a piece of silk from a German parachute found after the attacks on Sorgo Massey uh, during the war are available for you to see. Incidents frequently attended by the National Fire Service and the Auxiliary Fire Service from Hedgewell. We have also an extinguisher from a Lancaster bombing which traps on fire system and subsequent images showing fires caught by the RAI Fire Service, National Fire Service and Auxiliary Fire and Rescue Service from West Kirby and Hedgewell. Images which are reflective of our past in a station which celebrates our future. But before you take up the kind offer of a guided tour or witness our crews utilising the only collapsible training tower in the UK, I would like to extend the opportunity and the offer to Gavin Davis from Waits to say a few words around the build process. Gavin. for us, we've been extremely proud to be part of the project. Um, I kind of want to echo two things that Phil said. For us, first off, uh, our relationship with Mercy Fire and Rescue, probably over six or seven years now, this is the third station that we've built and completed. You know, we started in Toxteth, um, Prescott we handled over last year, and this one this year has been fantastic for us. Then we've all learned a few lessons, um, learned a fair bit on this one. Um, actually today we've started on site in St. Helens, so that you know, we're continuing forward uh, and hopefully that will, that will be a great scheme as well. Um, as far as this, this particular project, I do want to say thanks to, to the community as well. I mean, it's, 
obviously a very sensitive nature of build, um, the green field, and you know, we, we've tried to build in respect of that, but we appreciate um, along the way when you build a construction project that there's a perception potentially, you know, that it could be a bit of disruption, we don't always get it right, but we, we welcome people's feedback. Mark McCall, our construction manager, um, spent a lot of time talking to local people, um, you know, gauging concerns, and we do listen. Uh, we don't always get it right, but hopefully we have taken on board a lot of the things that have been said to us. And I hope that overall people kind of now they can see, see what's built, they see the benefit, they see how it sits. Um, and we do care about the community, I think most of I do as well. I think the councillors, everyone involved has done an extremely good job in coming together on this, making it happen. Um, but some tough conversations, but it's been fantastic. And hopefully you'll all enjoy a good tour around today and see just how great it is. Um, so thanks for your patience tonight, everyone. Um, I think as a whole team, and that's everyone, not just us as contractors, we have left a, a lasting legacy uh, for the community and the station and what it will do um, and what it does for people. And also I think, you know, during the build we mentioned the, the defib machine. It's great to leave that here. Um, things that we've enjoyed doing um, is offering kind of apprenticeships to people, uh, working on Heighton Apprentice Trust. Uh, we've got 132 apprentice weeks on here. Um, 14 training weeks, so for us it's really important and we like to give a bit back and hopefully those people will take from this something for life today and carry on with the news again. Um, we've enjoyed working with the local school, that was primary. Um, I don't know who dressed up as like a good site, um, they did a good job. Um, so look, so from us, just, just thanks for having us involved, we've enjoyed it immensely. We're proud of it, we talk about it a lot to our clients, you know, we're proud to, to show people this project. I have served you well for many years, so thank you very much. Thank you very much, Gavin, for that insight. Uh, can I ask the services chaplain, Reverend Bill Sanders, to join me in order to bless the station and all who serve in it? If you'd like to, would you just bow your heads? For a moment. O Lord, our living almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, we now dedicate this new fire station to you. We ask you to ensure the safety of every aspect of it, including the training ground, MFRS vehicles and equipment. Especially, we ask you also to ensure the safety of all firefighters and other personnel working out of here and within this area of Merseyside. Lord our God, since you alone are able to do all that we ask in this prayer of dedication, we give you praise and glory. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen.
So I'm particularly delighted to be able to officially open the uh, new fire station here in Salt Lake Thank you. Yes, go, 